sellouts, and Rutgers is preparing to kick off to Army to begin today's game. There's a good look at beautiful Mikey Stadium. What a beautiful facility it is. They have so much fun. Tank included, hopefully will not fire into the crowd, but uh, they get a little crazy up here. One never knows, but uh, terrific, terrific sense of history and tradition here, and it really is a fun place to play football. We were talking to Jimmy Can before the game, Lou, you and I, and, and he was psyched. He just said, terrific day for a game, great place to play a football game, and he was ready to rock and roll. Doug Geisler tees it up for Rutgers at the 35-yard line. He'll be kicking left to right on your screen, and the ball game is underway. It sails to Mike Mayweather at the goal line. He's to the 10, and knocked down at the 17-yard line. A hard tackle by Glenn Miller, senior out of Somerville, New Jersey, and Army will go on offense first. The cadets will line up on the offensive line with center Bill Spire. Pete Andrzejak and Jack Fry are the guards. John Silvers and Brett Petkus are the tackles. Doug Baker, the tight end. Sean Jordan starts at split end. And we'll give you the Army backfield after this play. First down 10 for the cadets. They're at the 17-yard line. The give is to Mayweather, who's hit at the line of scrimmage. Marty Mays on a solid tackle. A short pickup, a pickup of two. Second down and eight. The Army backfield in the wishbone behind quarterback Brian McWilliams, junior 5'11", 180 pounds out of Lincoln, Nebraska. The fullback will be Dave Foy, who takes over for the injured Ben Barnett. The halfbacks are Mike Mayweather and Calvin Cass. Second down and eight. Mayweather, drop, no, it's a reverse. McWilliams. And a beautifully executed play by the cadets. First down in Rutgers territory. First play, though, they went with the counter option. They set that up. What they're doing is they're, they're, they're moving motion in one way, and they went the other way. That time, they did a double fake, if you will. They faked the counter option. Williams kept the ball, came to the short side of the field, which Army does like to do. 38 yards later, Rick Williams is finally tackled, but a big gain for Army. First and 10, Army at the Rutgers 42. Here's Mayweather who dives off tackle across the 36-yard line. A good pickup and a second down coming up for the cadets. Rutgers on defense up front. Their nose guard, Marty Mays, Scott Miller, Joe Savoy. Tim Lester and Elnardo Webster, the defensive ends. Judovich and Spidell, the linebackers. Mays and Blanton at the corners. McCoy and Zealous are the safeties. McWilliams keeps again, another big gainer as he cuts it across the 25 and down to the 24-yard line. Darren Sellers on the tackle. Big hole there, great blocking at the point of attack. That is the triple option, the fake to the fullback. Then the quarterback will option the defensive end. By that we mean either he will pitch off to the trailing halfback or keep it himself and cut up field. That time, good decision by Brian McWilliams to keep the ball Take the jab step inside the defensive end for a good game. First and 10, Army at the Rutgers 24-yard line. Just underway, first quarter, initial drive of the game. And a give off tackle. Dave Foy carries the football. Foy, a senior, 5'10", 203 pounds, out of Silver Spring, Maryland. He's had one carry previous to that one, Frank, for three yards. Well, Ben Barnett had been virtually indestructible up to this point. He had had a solid season last year and was working on a solid season this year. He will be sorely missed, but Foy is a competent backup. And remember, in Army's scheme of things, they just use the fullback to keep you honest. Pick up a four, second down six. Here's Mayweather, who spins to the 20-yard line. Marty Mays again on the tackle. Also, Pat Yudovich coming in, and Yudovich leading the Scarlet Knights in tackles. Yudovich, a good, hard-nosed kid, a little bit undersized at middle linebacker at about 220 pounds, which, folks, to we normal people is, is kind of a large fellow, but with those giants down there, 220 pounds is not a big linebacker, and I think he suffers because of his lack of weight from time to time. It's not from lack of desire, believe me. Third down, six. Here's McWilliams. Nope. A pickup of just a couple. Tim Lester coming up to make the hit for Rutgers. Terrific play by Lester that time. Would not be optioned. Remember, it's assignment football. 
Lester played his assignment, which was to take the quarterback out of the play. Good play by Tim Lester. Keith Havenstreit is in to attempt a field goal. It will be a 33-yard attempt. He is two for two on the season. Snap is good. Kick up, and the kick is good. A 33-yard field goal. And there's a break in the action. 11 minutes and 41 seconds remaining. First quarter of the score. Army 3. Rutgers nothing. Weekends are special this fall on ESPN. Saturdays, you'll see the country's finest college football teams from all the most competitive conferences throughout the day and into the night live. Sundays, ESPN delivers the first and last words on the pro game. NFL Game Day previews all the matchups. Then NFL Primetime wraps it up with the greatest plays from every game. Football and ESPN, it's the right combination. ESPN presents the world's ultimate driving machine. You'll see coverage of the U.S. Open, British Open, PGA Championship, and year-long excitement from the PGA Tour. There's also the precision of the Lady Linksters and fun from tee to green with those swinging seniors. Join the world's greatest golfers for heart-stopping and heart-breaking thrills all year long on ESPN. Army takes the initial drive right down the field. They cap it off with a 33-yard field goal from Keith Havenstreit. And Rutgers gets ready to receive. The drive, seven plays, 66 yards. Chewed up three minutes and 19 seconds. And, of course, as we mentioned, the 33-yard field goal. Henry Henderson and Gary Melton are back deep for Rutgers. And Jeff Binney will be kicking off for Army. All starts right there, Lou. Uh, we just took a quick shot of it. The Army offensive line. It seems like every year they lose their whole offensive line, but they just replace them with guys who are as at least as competent as the guys who just graduated. Sort of like autopilot. I don't know how other way, what other way to describe it. It's a line drive kick. Melton in the end zone. He's at the 5. To the 10. And a nice maneuver by Melton as he gets across the 20 to the 23. And the Rutgers offense comes on the field. Up front, uh, offensive line that is dominated by fifth-year seniors. Center, Jeff Erickson, Nick Erda, and Steve Tardy are the guards. Bill Milano and Bill Hyros the tackles. Scott Blanche is the tight end. Tyrone McQueen the split end. Gary Melton starts at flanker. Jimmy Can and Mike Body in the backfield behind. Quarterback, Scott Ernie. Senior 6'1", 195 pounds, out of Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. As Frank mentioned in the pregame, 11th in the nation in total offense. He's completed 54% of his passes, and looks like Rutgers is going to start out in the hole. A penalty called against the Scarlet Knights on the kick return. Now they have to start in a hole. Uh, it's bad. You, you've just given up a field goal. Um, Army really had their way offensively. A good play by Tim Lester on third down. The only thing that stopped them. Now offensively, offensively, you got to start in the hole. Here's the pitch. It is Jimmy Can with a nice move who cuts it back in across the 20. Beautiful play by Can. Terrific cutback run by Jimmy Can, who is a good cutback runner. He looked to go wide. When that got sealed off, he made one quick cut, and that's the key to good cutback running, is to make the decision, plant, and go. And that's what Jim Can did. Did it was good for nine yards. Excellent looking play by Jimmy Can on first down. Second down and two. The ball marked at the 21. Receivers split left and right, and they give it to Body. Mike Body has a first down easy across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Body coming in with 249 yards rushing on the season, and Rutgers made it look easy on those first two plays. Well, good running, good intelligent running by the backfield guys. Army on defense. Up front, they'll go with Wagner and Burton DeForest at the linebackers. Huff and Laducer are the tackles. Rod Ofke, the nose guard. O'Toole and Davey, the linebackers. We'll give you the secondary after this play. I formation for Rutgers. 
First down 10, here's Ernie throwing, has McQueen at the 38, spins to the 40, and fights for extra yardage across the 40-yard line. Good play, I'm oh, sorry, Luke, go ahead. Good play by uh, Tyrone McQueen, though, to drive number 20, Ed Givens, off the ball, then cut it back and did the right thing on a rollout pass situation, came back to the football, came back to the quarterback to catch the ball in front of the defender. That was a nice-looking pass play. The Army secondary, Gibbons and Thorson at the corners. Michael McElrath and Jerry Farnsworth are the safeties. First and 10, Rutgers at the 41-yard line. Eye formation for the Knights, and the pitch goes to Can, who cuts it back again and picks up positive yardage. Pickup of about three, and a host of cadets coming up to make the tackle. Pat Davey leading the way. He leads Army in that department. Again, a good hard run by Jimmy Ken. We mentioned we spoke with him before the start of the game, Lou, and he told us he was kind of banged up. He had a real sore knee. He said, Lou, Frank, it's a big game. I'm going to go as hard as I can, as long as I can. You never ask for anything more than that from a football player. Second down, seven. At the 44, again, good yardage for the Knights. This time, Mike Body carries, and he's across midfield. We mentioned it before for Army when we took that sideline shot. Every play starts somewhere, and it starts up front. You have to have the horses up front in order to be able to make your offense go. No back, no matter how good, can run, can run without a hole. Any back, no matter how bad, can run with one. It's that simple. If the offensive line does the job for you, you're going to get yardage. Army's offensive line did it in their first series. Rutgers offensive line doing it for them now on Rutgers' first series. Third down and in inches for Rutgers at the midfield strike. Nine minutes and 24 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Big play right here at midfield. Good looking drive for Rutgers. They don't want it to stall here now. They've got to get this first down. backfield for Rutgers. Short yardage situation. Jimmy can hit at the line of scrimmage, but I believe he bounced forward just enough to get the first down. Yeah, a nice play by Bert DeForest, the outside linebacker tonight in there, but an even better play by Jimmy can had the good body lean that you need. You always want to get positive yards. Let's watch it on the replay here. There's the handoff. Now watch DeForest, nice in there, but because of the good forward body lean of Jimmy can enough to get the first down. Army with an excellent drive on their initial possession, and now Rutgers coming right back. Starting inside their 15, they have driven to the Army 49. High formation again for the Knights. Ernie gives to Can on a delay, a big hole, and Jimmy Can rambles down near the 30-yard line. Huge hole up the middle on the quick draw to Jimmy Can. Perfect play for a running back of Jimmy Can's ability, where he can read a little bit, make the quick cut, and go. Let's watch it on the replay. Good fake by Scott Ernie to make it look like a pass, then a real nice cut by Jimmy Can, and he rumbles for 18 yards right up the middle. Four carries right now for Jimmy Can, 31 yards. First and 10, Rutgers at the Army 31-yard line. Again, the eye formation for RU. Ernie pitches. This is Can, who cuts it. Another beautiful run. He's inside the 25 and spun down at the 23-yard line. Good Jimmy Can really running hard. Good hard-nosed run. You took the words right out of my mouth. There you see Jimmy Can from West Nyack, New York, only about 20 miles from here. So this is kind of a hometown uh, game for him. Now watch it coming right at you. Now there's some good blocking at the point of attack. Now watch this hard running as Jimmy leaps over the pile. Now watch him put his shoulder down right here and get what he can at the end of the run. Very important to finish your runs with authority. First and 10 Rutgers at the Army 22-yard line. Now again, they run it. Mike Body cuts it back in across the 15 to the 13-yard line. Finally knocked out of bounds by Mike McGelrath, the freshman free safety. There's Mike Body, 6 feet, 210 pounds. Not overly big for a fullback on this level as we take a look at it on the replay. But again, a heady run. He runs with his eyes open and his head up so he can read where the holes are. He makes the cut and then he moves upfield. For Rutgers backfield to be successful, that's the way they have to run. They're not that fast, 
They're not that shifty, but they are nifty. Second down two. Here's Body again. This time he's dragged down from behind. Pat Davey with a terrific defensive play. Body never able to get up that head of steam. Real good play by Pat Davey, the inside linebacker. The key is to read your keys as a linebacker. Watch 66. When he sees the guard block down, he shoots the gap where the guard used to be and gets to be a fly in the ointment. That's exactly what a linebacker has to do. That's one of the things I think, Lou, that Rutgers linebackers do not do enough of. When you have the play diagnosed, you have to force and do it with authority. Third down and one. Here's Body. Dick Anderson. You see his career record at Rutgers, 27, 30, and 4, 3 and 2 against Army, so he's been fairly successful and successful on that first down call as they get the first down. Good blocking again at the point of attack, Lou. Nothing real fancy, just straight ahead blocking. They led with Jeff Erickson uh, at the center and Nick Erd of the left guard did a good job of just wedging forward. That's called wedge blocking. Just get a piece of your man and drive him off the football. First and goal at the nine yard line. Eye formation again for Rutgers. And here's the pitch. It's Can looking to get outside and a nice cut. Can somehow, someway gets to the six yard line after Army had it diagnosed very well. Quick feet, all individual effort. I mentioned the word before, didn't get the chance to explain it. Not shifty, but nifty. Folks, that's the difference. Nifty means when you have real quick feet, you make that one cut and you go and you do it on a dime. Okay, that's what Jimmy can, can do for you. He's not going to give you a hundred jukes out there on the corner, but he will give you the quick feet, make that cut and go and get yardage where there was none to be made. Second down and goal at the six. 13th play of this drive. And Rutgers has used up five minutes and 20 seconds in a quick moving first quarter. Body off tackle inside the five to the four yard line. You saw Jerry Farnsworth, the strong safety, come in there and rip the ball out of Body's hands, but the play had been ruled dead. Here's a hometown for you. Are you ready for this? Jerry Farnsworth, a junior out of Sweet Home, Oregon. I know you love to look for those 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 homes. Uh, uh, where's uh, Doug Baker from? The ranks up there South with Carolina. Goose Creek, South okay. Carolina. Yeah. That's, that is your favorite. You might have to visit there someday. <laughs> Talk about it enough. <laughs> Third down and goal for Rutgers. Very important play. The 16th, excuse me, the 14th play of this drive. Ball marked at the four-yard line. Ernie will throw. Rolls out right. Fires. Touchdown. Jimmy Cam. They set it up beautifully. They had the isolation that they wanted. The tailback, the quick tailback on the big linebacker. Jimmy Can, let's watch it. Back out of the backfield. There's a blitz on. Watch 48 gets picked up by Bill Hyros. Plenty of vision for uh, Scott Ernie. And he sees Jimmy Can. Pat Davey just can't get there. He's not quick enough to cover a quick back like Jimmy Can. Beautiful drive for Rutgers. Boy, did they need that. For Can, his fourth touchdown reception of the season. Giesler will attempt the extra point. Snap is good. Kick is up. It is good. A timeout on the field. Five minutes and nine seconds remaining in an exciting first quarter. The score, Rutgers 7, Army 3. After my accident, I was out of work for several months, and the bills just kept piling up. The other side offered to settle, but it just wasn't enough. I was ready to sue. You don't have to sue. You can arbitrate or mediate. You don't even have to be there. We'll help resolve your dispute with a minimum of stress at a reasonable cost. All you have to do is give us a call. For a free brochure and more information, call toll-free 800-426-8889. Amboy Madison introduces another choice banking window of opportunity for homeowners. Equity loans are offered with variable interest rates indexed to the prime rate. Prime has soared to over 20% at times. Amboy Madison's Equity Line Plus loan offers you lifetime cap protection of only 13.25% regardless of the current prime. For more information, call 1-800-AMB-MTGS. Choice banking, Amboy Madison. Equity Line Plus. Lou, it's my profile. 
<laughs> Give yourself more credit, Frank. <laughs> Thanks, Lou. I was hoping you'd say that. Rutgers leading it, 7-3. to three. And both offenses very proficient in this first quarter. And Army's got a nice kickoff return right here. Across the 30-yard line, Dave Foy carries the football. And the cadets will go on offense for the second time. Very interesting on that last drive for Rutgers. 12 rushes and only two passes. You have the whole statistical breakdown, Lou. Why don't you give it to the folks? 14 plays, 88 yards. So a good, consistent, long drive for Rutgers. Eating up 6 minutes and 22 seconds. Can had 44 yards rushing and, of course, the 4-yard touchdown reception. Army starts first down and 10 at the 32. McWilliams pitches wide. Mayweather has some room. Vaughn McCoy rides him out of bounds, but not before. Mayweather picks up about nine yards on the carry. A uh, terrific block by his uh, lead halfback, Calvin Cass. Remember, in the wishbone, everybody works. You can't take a break on any play. Now, let's watch it. Here's the triple option, the fake to the fullback. Now, McWilliams options the defensive end and pitches to Mayweather. But watch right at the head there. Look at that great block by Calvin Cass. Puts one of the Rutgers defenders on his duff, which gives uh, Mayweather the option to either take it in, take it out, go wherever he wants to go, but it's certainly going to be for good yardage wherever he does go. It is a first down for the cadets. First down and 10 at the 43. And they try to go off tackle this time. The inside give to Foy, Bob Spidell on the tackle. Spidell, the senior out of Wayne, New Jersey. That's the kind of plays that the Rutgers linebackers have to make. They have to fill. They have to do it aggressively. A lot of people think to play the option offense, you have to play soft. No, you don't have to play soft. You do have to play assignment football, but you have to be very aggressive, Lou, within your assignments. And Rutgers has to do more of that this afternoon. Nick Williams pitches wide. Here's Calvin Cass with a nice cut. And he's across midfield. A good pickup. Rusty Mays made the initial hit for Rutgers. But also a pretty good defensive scheme by Rutgers. Now, if we can see it on the replay, you'll be able to see how every guy is assigned. Now, watch this. Now, watch the fullback get taken by 99. Watch Sellers take the quarterback and hit him. And then there's somebody on the tailback there. That's number 20, Rusty Mays, who finally makes the tackle. Sure, you're going to give up some yards, but you won't give up the big play. Third down and a long three at the midfield strike. They go up the middle, and I believe they're going to be short of first down yardage. Tim Lester made the big hit for Rutgers. Carrying the football was Taylor Gray, the fullback. He's a senior out of Houston, Texas, and the Army faithful would like Jim Young to go for it here, and I believe he is. Yeah, Jim Young has a history of, of tremendous faith in his offense. When it's ever fourth and short, almost anywhere on the field, he'll go for it. Ball big marked play. at the 48. Fourth down and about a yard and a half for the cadets. A big play early in the ball game. McWilliams, did he get it? I don't know. A sensational hit by Tim Lester. It's going to depend on the spot. The way McWilliams reached, I think he reached it across the yard marker. Let's watch it on the replay. There Spidell gets blocked by the tackle. Actually, Actually Spidell gets back into the play, gets an assist from Lester. Good job by both linebackers. The outside linebacker, Tim Lester, and the inside guy, Bob Spidell. It's going to depend on the spot. I think he might have just have gotten it. And they stretch the chain out. First down, Army. Williams got just enough at the 46-yard line of Rutgers. Well, a gutsy call by Jim Young, but anybody that knows Jim Young knows that's the style of football he plays. He's a very quietly intense person. You see him, he's always very polite, but you watch him on the sidelines or after a game, and he is fired up. And he gets his team fired up. McWilliams spins, keeps it, and is hit at the line of scrimmage, but picks up about three or four. Pat Udovich on the tackle, the senior out of Brookhaven, Pennsylvania. You know, Udovich is four shy, actually I guess he's about two shy now, of fourth place on the all-time Rutgers list for tackles. There he is, number, num number 91, and a captain on this Rutgers Scarlet Knight squad. Uh, again, a hard-nosed player but he makes too many tackles four and five yards off the ball, and a lot of that is because he's really not that big for a middle linebacker. Has to be more aggressive a little bit and force the issues just a wee bit more. Second and six, Taylor Gray fumbles the football. 
and Rutgers has recovered. At the 36, so the first big turnover of the game, and yes, it is Rutgers recovery. Gray was hit at the line of scrimmage and coughed it up. Uncharacteristic of an Army team. Army has been excellent in the giveaway takeaway turnover ratio. Let's watch it on the replay. The big hit by number 63, Bob Spidell, as he smacks the running back, and then a Rutgers recovers. Army has a series of objectives that they believe they have to accomplish to win the game. And you see it all over. You see it in their locker room. You see it in the halftime locker room. And number one of the objectives is to win the turnover battle. Army has been doing that all year with a plus 10 turnover ratio. That is one of the reasons why they've been successful. They have not turned the football over very often, but they did it. And the reason why, the big hit by Spidell. A first down play for Rutgers picks up short yardage. It's Dwight Giles who carries the football. Backup fullback out of Rawway, a senior, 5'1", 195 pounds. Pick up of two. All right, now a big defensive series for Army. They got massaged the first time they had to play some defense. Let's, let's, let's call it like it is, folks. They did not look good on defense, so they have to regroup and rally and prove to Rutgers that they came here to play today. It's early in the game. A lot can happen, but what you do now establishes establishes what's going to happen later. Second down, seven. Ernie pitches Henry Henderson's first carry, and he's knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Jerry Farnsworth penetrating out of his strong safety position. Well, that's what the strong safety is supposed to do for you. When you bring the so strong safety up, that's called an inverted rotation. You bring the cornerbacks back, and you bring the safety up. There he is, Jerry Farnsworth, number 23. You put him on the line of scrimmage, and instead of being a defensive back, he becomes another linebacker, and his primary responsibility is to play run rather than pass. Army mixing it up pretty good defensively on this series. Rutgers two for two on the first drive on third down conversions, and they have another key one here, third and seven. Ernie, plenty of protection. It is intercepted. It was intended for Dwight Giles, the fullback, in and out of his hands, and Ed Gibbons, his fourth interception of the season, and that has been a problem for Rutgers this season. Well, let's watch it on the replay. Good protection for Scott Ernie, and that ball is there. That is a catchable football. Giles has got to make that catch, and I tell you, Scott Ernie, who's taken the rap in a lot of situations when it's really not been his fault, once again, that ball was there, should have been caught by Dwight Giles. First and 10, Army at the 45, a huge hole. Calvin Cass across the 35-yard line. Counter option that time. They give you the same look every time talking about Army, the wishbone look. But sometimes what they'll do is they'll get you leaning in one direction and then counter option and come against the grain. And they also have the type of backs that are very effective in that style of offense. You know, you mentioned Scott Ernie. That was his 13th interception of the season. And Rutgers is a minus... 13 on the turnover ratio. One of the reasons right now that they're a losing football club. You can't afford, you cannot afford to have that kind of turnover ratio. And we have quickly come to the end of the first quarter. We have played one quarter of football here at Mikey Stadium. The score, Rutgers 7, Army 3. This fall, Michael Jordan moves. Magic Johnson moves. Larry Bird moves. This fall, the NBA moves from TBS to a new cable channel, TNT. Every NBA star, every NBA team, twice each week, all season long. Go where the NBA moves, TNT. Is your business looking to increase its net profit? And just follow the bouncing ball. If you manage a local business, get a jump on your competition. Call your cable operator and advertise during the NBA on TNT.
Welcome back to Sports Call. Just underway, second quarter. Army just picked up a first down on a run by Mike Mayweather, and they have the football first down, 10 at the 30-yard line. McWilliams keeps and has an open field. He's at the 10 and knocked out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Vaughn McCoy forced him out. As Brian McWilliams, lone assignment for Rutgers. Nobody took the quarterback. That's what we've been saying, and we will continue to say because that's the way you play defense against the option. Let's watch it on the replay. They dive the halfback in, the fullback up the field. He fakes to the remaining tailback, and you see Tim Lester, 98, trying to catch up. That's a mismatch. You've got to get somebody on the quarterback every single play. First and goal, Army at the nine-yard line. The cadets trying to capitalize on the Rutgers turnover. This is the fullback, Foy, who dives down to the three-yard line. Dave Foy with a huge hole that time. Rutgers looks a little bit confused on defense. Remember, everybody thinks, well, the option. I mean, how tricky can it be? They run the same play. They don't run the same play every time. That last play with McWilliams, the big 21-yard gain, it was really more like a power sweep than a true option. They counter options. Sometimes they give to the fullback. Sometimes they pitch out. It can be very confusing. You've got to clear your mind and play assignment football to play effective defense against the wishbone. Second and goal of the three. Mayweather bounces down to the one-yard line. John Blanton coming up to cover up for Rutgers. You know what I found to be an amazing statistic when I was doing my homework, Lou, about the Army backfield as we take a look at it, the replay. Now, again, that is really not the option. In a sense, that's a power eye without the eye formation, using the fullback to lead the halfback right in. So they will give you a lot of different looks. But I saw an interesting statistic that I want to bring up sooner or later, Lou. I've got to wait till after the split. Third and goal at the one. McWilliams, he is short. Brought down at the half-foot line, if you will, Pat Yudovich and also Bob Spidell, who has played a fairly effective game for Rutgers. Terrific game. Well, watch this on the option. Now, this is the option. He fakes to the fullback. Now, watch. He's going to option the defensive end here, but watch Spidell from the inside make the tackle and do it with authority so that Williams' momentum cannot take him into the end zone. Quickly finish that point. All the starting quarterbacks for, for excuse me, tailbacks for uh, Army have lost a total of only five yards all year long. It's unbelievable. Fourth and goal. Mayweather. I don't believe he made it. Yes, touchdown Army. Lou, if I could just make that point, I had to hurry it through. Once again, the reason I said it is that in a goal line situation, these guys are always going to get positive yardage for you. Now there's Yudovich, but look at Mayweather's struggle to get yardage. When your entire starting backfield, with the exception of the quarterback, has only lost five, year, five yards excuse me, all year long, that means you're always leaning forward. You're always getting, getting positive yardage. And on the goal line, where would you want it more than right at the goal line? The kick is up. It is good. A break in the action, 12 minutes and 37 seconds remaining. Second quarter, Army 10, Rutgers 7. Amboy Madison introduces another choice banking window of opportunity for homeowners. Equity loans are offered with variable interest rates indexed to the prime rate. Prime has soared to over 20% at times. Amboy Medicine's Equity Line Plus loan offers you lifetime cap protection of only 13.25% regardless of the current prime. For more information, call 1-800-AMB-MTGS. Equity Line Plus. I'll never forget 1958, the first overtime championship game ever played in the NFL. United and the Colts, they beat the Giants 23-17. And the Sporting News was there. The Sporting News, with more complete coverage than any other sports weekly. Call 1-800-253-1000 and get 29 issues of the Sporting News for four payments of just $4.99. You'll save 69% off the cover price, 40% off the regular subscription rate. Call now, 1-800-253-1000. It's a seesaw battle early. 
Army leading Rutgers by the score of 10 to 7. The cadets on a seven play, 56 yard drive, all running plays. No surprise there, Luke. Yeah, it took up two minutes and 57 seconds. The key play, McWilliams with the 21 yard run. Today, McWilliams has seven carries, 81 yards. He came in with a 332 yards rushing on the season. Well, remember, after the turnover also, we talked about it a little bit earlier, turnovers will kill you. Rutgers right now has been hammered, murdered. Call it whatever you want. Make up a word, folks. I don't care. That's why they're a losing football club right now. They turn the ball over too much. Army takes it away from you. Rutgers gives it to you with opportunities to score. If Rutgers is turn going to turn things around, they've got to turn that turnover ratio around. You know, you talked about the halfbacks for Army getting positive yardage. For the illustration was the last touchdown in which I said Mayweather did not get in originally, but he pushed forward after being hit behind the line of scrimmage. Here's the kickoff, and it's Gary Milton who had a hole, but then ran out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Looked like he had a lane, but Army recovered quickly. One of the leaders in the country in kickoff returns, averaging over 25 yards per return, Gary Melton. He's up near the leaders. You saw why. But there's a lot to it. Let's watch it on the replay here. Beautiful ground-level replay. Big Gary Melton. He's about 6'3". Look at that stride. But watch the key blocking right there. See the wedge? Take out all the wedge busters. Gives Melton a lane. He has good vision, makes the cut, heads up field. Good field position for Rutgers. That was a good kickoff return. Rutgers first down and 10 at their own 29-yard line. Again, the I formation for Rutgers. Ernie fakes the handoff. Throws, has a receiver, and it's a big gainer to the tight end, Scott Blanche, who has not caught a lot of passes this season, but he gets one there, and it's a first down for Rutgers near midfield. There's Scott Blanche. You know, Rutgers had been a real tight end oriented offense. They had had some good uh, tight ends in the past. Guy Campbell comes to mind, was a real good player, and Rutgers had a really well-conceived short passing game, which always has a, a, a prime role for the tight end. This year, Rutgers kind of got away from that, and that's not what they had been doing in the past, so we'll see if they want to involve Scott Blanche just a little bit more. Had worked for him in the past, maybe they're going back to basics. First and 10, Rutgers at the 49, some movement, and then body picks up about three yards off of right tackle, penalty markers on the play. Looks like Bert DeForest, the uh, defensive end linebacker, and I call them that, I even put that on my charts, DE slash outside linebacker. There's the call, offside, yeah, came from the left tail, from the left side, let's see, was it Bert DeForest? Let's take a look at it. it Might have been number 78, no, it was number 78, Will Huff. One of the best defensive linemen for me, probably their best defensive player right now, certainly with O'Neal Miller out of the lineup. Anticipated the count just a bit. Big break for Rutgers, because now you start first and five instead of first and ten. A lot more things you can do with a first and five situation than first and ten. Neither team has had any difficulty moving the football. We need a calculator today. Lisa. Rutgers stopped themselves with an interception, and Army stopped themselves once with a fumble. Jimmy can with a tremendous hole across the 30 down to the 28-yard line. I don't think Can could believe the hole. Well, we badmouthed the offensive line, plain and simple, in the beginning. Well, maybe we should do it again because you got a holding call going to go against Rutgers. Lou, we're not going to patronize anybody, not ourselves, uh, nobody, because we, we, we try to call it the way we see it. And, and Rutgers' offensive line has not been doing the job, but most people thought that was the strength of the Scarlet Knight team. Let's watch it here. Let's look for a left guard on the replay. That's Nick Erda, number 57. There he is right in the center of your screen. Can't quite make it out if it's him, but yeah, there it is. There it is right there, number 57, Nick Erda blocking against it. looked like Mike O'Toole or Rob Wagner, the outside linebacker, with the hole quickly finish that point. Rutgers offensive line has not lived up to ex uh, expectations. From tackle to tackle, all fifth-year seniors, and they're big. Milano, 6'6", 275. Erda, 6'1", 260. Erickson, 6'3", 250. Tardy, 6'5", 273. And Hyros, 6'4", 265. They've got the bulk, but they're not doing the job. They've got to start. Rutgers first down, 15 at the 45. Ernie gets it away, but body crunched immediately after the catch. Mike McElrath, the freshman out of Lemoyne, Pennsylvania. Good pressure that time by the outside linebacker slash defensive end. Bob Wagner, watch him, number 97. And that's a little kind of a slip screen, but good defense that time by number four there. 
That's Mike McElrath. Good job for a freshman. You try to take advantage of a freshman's inexperience. That time, McElrath diagnosed the play properly and then executed with authority. That's the key. Second down and 13. Ball marked at the 47. Ernie straight back this time. Has plenty of time. Has a receiver. Melton cannot make the catch. Again, a catchable ball. You said it right there, Lou. That's a catchable ball. Gary Melton has got to make that catch. That's for first down yardage. Now let's watch it on the replay. Now give credit where credit is due. Good job of pass protection by the offensive line. And a well-thrown ball by Scott Ernie. He lost it in over Mike O'Toole and in front of the safeties. That's a tough pass to throw. You've got to put just enough touch on it, but you've got to get it in there with enough zing also so it can't be intercepted. Gary Melton has got to make that catch. Third and 13. Ernie to throw. Great protection. Great protection. Long arms it out of bounds. Intended for Randy Jackson, but the coverage was there. Miguel Rath was back there along with Mike Thorson. And Rutgers will have to punt. It'll be our first punt of the day. That was a coverage incompletion, if you will. Great protection by the offensive line. We bad mouth them, and rightly so when they're, when they're messing up, but we'll give them credit when they're doing well. Terrific protection for Scott Ernie. Just great coverage in the secondary by the Army Cadets. He had to throw it away. This is part of Rutgers' game, which has not been up to par the last couple of weeks. Bill Chesna started the season as the first-string punter, if you will. He was injured, and now Daryl Pellegrino is in. He has potential, but he's only a freshman. 6'1", 190 pounds, and he shanks one here. Very short drop that time also. He gets a, he gets a good roll, so Rutgers will get something out of it. But a very short drop by the punter that time. Normally a punter wants to be back 10, 12, or more yards. That time he was only about 8 yards behind the center. Very unusual. Army will start inside their 15. It turned out to be a 41-yard punt. And the cadets will have it first and 10 at the 13-yard line. Big defensive series now for Rutgers, Lou, because they got massaged the last time out. They've got to be able to prove that they can stop Army. Remember, they have not. Army's first drive resulted in a field goal, the second in a touchdown. Calvin Cass over left tackle. Joe Savoy makes the original hit. And then he gets some help from Elnardo Webster as well. There you see number 30 on the screen, Mike Mayweather, Calvin Cass. He's a junior, Mayweather. We're talking about from St. Louis, Missouri, and I really like him. He's a real hard-nosed kid. Ten touchdowns on the year. In a wishbone offense, that is incredible. One of the best. Second down. And seven. McWilliams keeps turns it in and has close to first down yardage across the 23 yard line. Boy, he is giving Tim Lester fits right now. Lester had a real good opening quarter and he's going off the field. You just saw him out of the top of your screen. He's going out right now. He is being replaced. He's having a difficult time reading. Watch number 98. See him take the step inside, then it's too late. He, uh, as a defensive end, you have to be outside in. You want to force Brian McWilliams back into the inside so your big linebackers can watch, take a, take a shot at him. It's Bad technique that time by Tim Lester. First down and 10. And the pitch is wide to Mayweather, who rolls near the 30-yard line. John Blanton. And Chris Piquel over to make the tackle. Well, a good job that time by the tight end, Doug Baker. A very, very much improved uh, tight end. Excuse me. Let's watch it on the replay. Now watch. Now watch again. Now Chris Piquel is in there. Now he makes McWilliams pitch. But the good block, you saw it right there by Doug Baker on the defensive back, gave Mayweather just enough room to make his cut and get positive yardage. Second down, four. Here's Mayweather. Hurries his head into the Rutgers defensive line. A short pickup, perhaps two yards on the play. And it will bring up a third down and two. 
Army with 154 rushing yards already. Rutgers not doing badly with 71. Mind you, that's a healthy total at this point. But 154 rushing yards for Army, that's unbelievable. They're already halfway to their, uh, to their average. Third and one, the give is up the middle. It looks like it will be enough for a first down, and indeed it is. The crowd likes it. It must be uh, Army faithful, I guess. Somebody's and down. one of the Rutgers players down. Looks to be. Could be Bob Spidell, yeah, number 60. Bob Spidell. He's had a good first half, too. Army, in the second quarter, has been tremendous this season. It has been their best quarter in which they have scored points. Well, Army averages 358 yards rushing per game. That's for there. There's the stat right there, as you can see it for yourself. Right now, up over 170 yards, with still nearly eight minutes left to play in the second in the second period. That's there's number 63, Bob Spidell. Oh, he gets hammered and bent backwards, and his leg goes underneath him. Good hit by Jack Frey that time, the big offensive guard. Remember, Frey now 6'3", 260 pounds. That's a mismatch. Spidell at 220. Again, a relatively big guy, but in a situation like that, he's giving away 40 pounds to the offensive lineman. Folks, ouch, that hurts. There you get a look at the scoreboard here at Mikey Stadium. Seven minutes and 50 seconds remaining here in the first half. First quarter started off with both offenses moving the ball very well and looked like we might have a lot of points scored here today but second quarter is kind of bogged down a little bit just a little bit just a little bit first and 10 army at the 34 yard line the fullback Foy fights his way for about three or four he's across the 35 up to the 37 yard line Mike Bouchard on the tackle for Rutgers, the senior out of Sayreville, New Jersey. Good play by Bouchard, again, to be aggressive. It's very important that the Rutgers linebackers be aggressive. Let's watch it on the replay. Watch number 46. He's reading across. When the back cuts back, bam, he puts him down right there. Good linebacker play. Second and seven. Again, it's the fullback boy. A big gainer into Rutgers territory across the 40-yard line. Terrific block at the point of attack, and the big fullback just rumbles through there. Watch it on the right side. Blocked down by Carlton Rice, a great block, and then another crushing block by number 71, the veteran Jack Fry, a starter last year. He has the most experience on the Rutgers, excuse me, check that, on the Army offensive line. He's just crushing people right now. And Dave Foy doing a good job in his first starting assignment with 36 yards rushing. Calvin Cass high steps his way down to the 26-yard line. Glenn Miller in to make the tackle, and you're going to see a lot of Miller in the secondary for Rutgers. He probably is their best run support secondary player. Well, let's watch it on the replay, but there's a great, great job by the center of the Army offensive line, and there's Miller making the hit. Forget about it. Army has not thrown a pass so far. They really haven't had to throw a pass. Why do it when you're doing it on the ground, which is what you do best? Williams pitches wide, and Mayweather scoots inside the 15-yard line. See the way he finishes a run, though, Lou? He's a punishing runner. There he is. Good close-up of Mike Mayweather. As I said, 5'8", but a solid 182 with strong legs. He'll punish you when you come up to hit him, and he knows he's not going to be able to juke you. He doesn't even bother. He tries to run up one side and down the other. Lou used to be able to check for cleat marks when you try to tackle a guy like that. Here it is again, the triple option, the fake to the fullback, pitches to the tailback. Now watch him finish the run up. We didn't have, we ran out of time there. But uh, he is a terrific, does a terrific job of finishing the run. Calvin Cass again with a huge hole inside the 10-yard line and down to the eight. Pickup of about seven on the play. It'll bring up a second down and three for Army. Calvin Cass, junior out of Somerdale, New Jersey. You wonder how he got away from Rutgers, huh? 6.7 average per carry. 391 yards on the season. Call that lofty, I bet. And Cass again. This time a penalty marker is thrown in. And He's going to get a prob hold. Yeah, probably will be against Army. It'll be the first 
real major penalty against Army, but the second penalty of the game against the Cadets. On the left side of the line, either big number 64, John Silvers, or number 65, Pete Andresiak. Two big guys, Silvers at 6'4", 246, and uh, Andresiak, 6'6", 265, out of Heidelberg, Germany. A long way to come to play football, don't you think? Well, yeah. They'll march it off. There's the back of Jim Young. You saw him with the headsets on there. Penalties Army, two for 15 yards. Rutgers, two for 20. It's been a relatively well-played first half. Well, I think it's been an exceptional first half. If, if you want to watch defensive football, you might want to change the channel. <laughs> but if you really want to watch exciting, offensive, laden, <laughs> how else could you say in football? This is where you want to be, folks. I tell you, bring out the calculator. Second down, 13 at the 17-yard line, and Army tries to go up the middle on the option that time, but not much room. Pete Kavitsis on the tackle. Good job by the nose tackle, Kavitsis that time, to stop up the hole. Right now, Mays is out, Kavitsis is in. Kavitsis is a little bit smaller, but a little bit quicker than Mays. Remember, I said in the pregame, I think if there was a real clear-cut advantage, it was in quickness that Army had over Rutgers. I think Rutgers has taken out some of its bigger players and put in some that are just a little bit more, more quick. Third and 11 at the 15-yard line. And Williams inside the 10-yard line and knocked out of bounds at the 8th. And a good job by the Rutgers defense that time as both John Blanton and Tim Lester stayed at home. A terrific job by Tim Lester. Remember, Tim Lester's 6'5", 220. He's in the open field against a quick scat back. Brian McWilliams. Now watch the great fake by McWilliams, but watch Lester stay home. Number 98 right there, body under control. McWilliams makes the quick move, but watch Lester get back in the play. That's good defense. Havenstreit will attempt a 25-yard field goal. The kick is up. It is good. A 25-yard field goal by Keith Havenstreit, who's now 4 for 4 on the season. A timeout on the field. Four minutes and 19 seconds remaining, second quarter. Army 13, Rutgers 7. Weekends are special this fall on ESPN. Saturdays, you'll see the country's finest college football teams from all the most competitive conferences throughout the day and into the night live. Sundays, ESPN delivers the first and last words on the pro game. NFL Game Day previews all the matchups. Then NFL Primetime wraps it up with the greatest plays from every game. Football and ESPN, it's the right combination. This fall, Michael Jordan moves. Magic Johnson moves. Larry Bird moves. This fall, the NBA moves from TBS to a new cable channel, TNT. Every NBA star, every NBA team, twice each week, all season long. Go where the NBA moves, TNT. Back at Mikey Stadium, Army leading Rutgers 13-7. to Huge crowd there on a beautiful day for football. You couldn't ask for a better day than this in late October. The drive for Army, 11 plays, all running once again, 58 yards. Elapsed time, 6 minutes, 57 seconds. How do you stop Rutgers from scoring? You keep the football away from them. 28-yard field goal, 20, excuse me, 25-yard field goal by Havenstrom. It's a bouncer taken by Melton at the 30. And a penalty marker down. They get a block in the back, Lou, that time. Rutgers going to start in the hole again. I'll tell you, you know, as a coach, you've got to be frustrated with that. Nick Anderson at this point has to be really frustrated. They're going to have, would have had good field position. It's not going to happen for them. They call it a hole. And holding on the run back. And as you mentioned, Rutgers again will have to start deep in its own territory. Watch it on the right corner of your screen. And that's Chris Piquel, number 50. There's a little little takedown there on one of the Army players. Trying to be aggressive, but that arm slipped out. You've got to keep those arms in, especially when you're in the open field. 
defense. You can get away with it sometimes, Lou, when you're in the, the, the heat of the battle and you're in the trenches because arms are flying, legs are flying, helmets are flying, and, the, and quite quite frankly, the officials really can't see it. But when you're in the open field like that, they'll nail you every time. Four minutes and 11 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Rutgers trailing 13-7. They'll try to get something going now on their offensive possession, starting at the 18-yard line. Ernie Gibbs on a delay. Again, it's another huge hole. Rutgers is having a lot of success running the football against Army. And Good job on the right side. Jimmy Camp picked up almost nine yards on that count. Uh, he's, he's having a great game. And for a guy who was not at 100% with his real sore knee, let's watch it on the replay. Nice block, nice influence block by the center, Jeff Erickson. Great, great block down by Bill Hyros. Wipes out the middle the middle guard, and then the, the offensive right guard, Steve Tardy, kicks out the defensive end. That's going to make for a good hole. Great job by the Rutgers offensive line that time. Split backs for RU this time, and they give it to Henry Henderson. Excuse me, Mike Body. Mike Body on the carry across the 40-yard line. Huge hole this time on the left side of the offensive line. A little bit of cross blocking. You'll be able to see it on the replay. Terrific job. Watch the left side of the offensive line blow a huge hole there. Look at that great block against Tim Leducer. Great job by the left side of the offensive line. Nick Erda and Bill Milano on the left side. Did a great job. First and 10 Rutgers argue at their own 41-yard line. Jimmy Can struggles for good yardage across the 45 to the 46 yard line. I'd say he's playing like a man possessed, Lou, right now. He's running up one side of people, down the other. Even his own men, if they get in the way, they're fair game, too. Tim Leducer came up to make the tackle, but not before Rutgers picked up five yards. Second and five. Under three minutes remaining in the first half. Army 13, Rutgers 7. pitch to Can. This time he's in trouble and the cadets play it well. Coming up to make the play, Burt DeForest and Will Huff also getting in on the action. Great job by Burt DeForest. Would not be blocked that time. Made Jimmy Can, can excuse me, commit himself and there was nowhere to go. That's what we talked about that Rutgers should be doing. Remember we talked about Tim Lester. When you're on the outside, your assignment is to force everything back to the middle of the field. Why, though? Because that's where all your other defenders are, obviously. And that's exactly what Bert DeForest did that time. And uh, so even though he didn't make the primary tackle, he did make the play. Rutgers 2 for 4 on third down conversions, but 0 for 2 since that first drive. That's incomplete. Ernie throwing across the middle to Melton. And again, a pass that hit him on the hands. That pass was there. Again, a catchable ball. Melton's got to get down and make that play. Sure, the ball was a little bit thrown, but watch where the defender is. Ernie has to throw the football there. Now, real good pass protection again. He's got lots of time. Picks out the secondary receiver and then puts it there. That ball is there and should be caught. Gary Melton, a junior, 6'185", got to make that play. Pellegrino, the punt, this one, a good one as he drives Wynn back, and it bounces out of bounds inside the one-yard line. Hey, there's the job by the freshman punter. There you see the mark. It's at the one-foot line. 54-yard kick. Let's watch it here on the replay. Now watch it. Perfect. Wynn tries to get to it. Now he does the right thing. When he, know, when he knows it's going to hit inside the 10-yard line, you're supposed to let it go because chances are it will go into the end zone. But Lou, sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't. At least somebody's going to get lucky. That time Rutgers did. <laughs> With a minute 43 remaining, Rutgers has all three timeouts remaining and Army will have to snap the ball from the one-foot line. Here's the give to Calvin Cass, who gets across the five to the six-yard line and gives the cadets some running room. That's a big play for Army. Well, that's, that's the Army version of the power eye. It was the same play that they used to score Mike Mayweather before. What they do is they take the fullback and the halfback, dive them into the line, and give the ball to the trailing, to the trailing halfback so he gets a little bit, uh, some extra blocking, and they get a better push at the line of scrimmage. Nothing fancy there. It's just, hey, who wants it more? I believe that 
As Rutgers called timeout, I'm not sure what the delay is. It's a timeout. I believe Rutgers did call a timeout. Rutgers talking it over on defense. Right now, some of the Rutgers defenders thinks that that tank rolling by is uh, is uh, Mike Mayweather, I think, at this particular point. They have been steamrolled. Cal boy. Calvin Cass has done the job today. Watch it. Again, see, there's that power eye situation. See Mayweather and see the fullback clear it out for him. Good job by Calvin Cass to read. Remember, we talked about it before, and here's a good opportunity to talk about it again, Lou. The Army backs just don't lose yardage. They just don't. Second down and four at the six-yard line. McWilliams, and he picks up a couple. Bouchard came up and played it well for Rutgers, along with Marty Mays and also Leonardo Webster. And Rutgers, I believe, has called another timeout. So a big play coming up for both Army and Rutgers here. A third down and two. Obviously, the Knights would like to force Army into a punting situation in their end zone. Absolutely, because Rutgers with a good chance of taking over with good field position. Now, let's watch it on the replay. Now, watch what the defensive end does here, though. Will not let McWilliams get outside. Forces McWilliams back into the middle so the pursuit can cut him down. That's what Rutgers has to do on each and every option play. Now, you've got to realize also in this particular case, a heady play by Brian McWilliams because he didn't want to be forced out of bounds either. So really a good play on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Army will line up with a third down and two at the eight yard line. They need to get just past the 10 to pick up the first down. Cap has the first down, Calvin Cap. And a great job by that Army offensive line. On a terrific job on the lead block by the fullback, Dave Foy. Took Pat Udovich right out of the play. Watch 28. Boom! Look at Udovich go down. I'm t I, and I don't want to take anything away from Pat Udovich. Again, a hard-nosed kid. But give credit where credit is due. A crushing block by Dave Foy. That made that play go. I'm telling you, when I saw Udovich go down like that, I was checking for my feet. Uh, some memories of some real bone-jarring blocks by some of those big ornery fullbacks. First and ten Army. Here is Cass. He's met at the line of scrimmage and picks up a couple of yards. Scott Miller and also Mike Bouchard again on the tackle. Bouchard doing a good job. He's a little bit bigger than Spidell in there. Bouchard about 6'3", around 230 pounds. You need somebody in there who could stand tall and stop the run right there. You can't make tackles as a linebacker. Lou, you cannot make tackles five and six yards down the field. You gotta make them at the line of scrimmage. And we are winding down now in this first half. Here's the give to Mayweather with that quick first. And the ball came loose, but the whistle had already blown, so no turnover. It's a good call. It's a first down for Army as well at the 24-yard line. You know, we have a live mic on the field, and you can hear the hitting, and I, and I think that's real characteristic of this game as you see it on the replay. Good read by Mike Mayweather as he finds the hole, gets in it, makes one quick adjustment, and then goes, and again goes with authority. But a comment about the hitting. Both coaches said this is one of the most, the most enjoyable games to play and to coach to play and he said the players love it because it is so hard hitting and it's all played within the, the rules of the game. It's really what college football is supposed to be all about. And we have come to halftime. Army leading it 13 to 7 and we will return with first half comments and second half action in just a few moments. pass more than 335 tests before it can undergo this one. For water quality, call 1-800-648-SAND, 1-800-648-SAND. Amboy Madison introduces another choice banking window of opportunity for homeowners. Equity loans are offered with variable interest rates indexed to the prime rate. Prime has soared to over 20% at times. 
Amboy Medicine's Equity Line Plus Loan offers you lifetime cap protection of only 13.25%, regardless of the current prime. For more information, call 1 800 AMB MTGS. Equity Line Plus. Welcome back to Mikey Stadium. My name is Lou Brockno and Frank Labono is here as well. Army leading Rutgers by the score of 13-7 at halftime. And in that first half, Frank Army was able to control the football. Well, that's Army's game plan. Always has been and seemingly, as long as Jim Young will coach here anyway, always will be controlling the ball on the ground, keeping the ball away from the opposition. Let's take a look at first half statistics. Total yards, Army 243, Rutgers 134. Rutgers just didn't have an opportunity to accumulate them. Passing, it's Rutgers, but not a lot, 36 yards. Army, zero yards. That's not an unfamiliar statistic for Army. First half rushing, all Army on the ground, but Rutgers had its share of success as well when they had the football. Well, you know, out of that 98 yards, the uh, uh, Jimmy Can getting a lion's share of those, playing an excellent first half. 98 yards and one half of football on the ground should be enough to win the game. Turnovers even. Rutgers with the interception, Army with the fumble, and penalties not a significant factor in the first half. Army, the average, uh, Calvin Cass, excuse me, had uh, eight carries, 49 yards in that first half. Army, the average time of possession was three minutes, 24 seconds on five drives. Boy, they really held the football, didn't yeah. they? And 7.5 plays per drive, 6.4 yards per play. I mean, you don't want to make too much of statistics. Statistics can be deceptive. What you want to look for in that is the fact that Army does not let the opposition get the football. No matter how good Rutgers offense can play, they can't do it from the sideline. Army keeps you off the field. It's that simple. So even when they're not scoring, they're doing something positive for their team because they're giving their defense a chance to rest. And let's face it, Army's defense, not one of the nation's best. Certainly not a poor defense. I'm not saying that, but it's not the strong suit of this club. So what you do is you're taking complete advantage of what you do well and staying away from the things that you don't do best. Play selection in that first half. Army, 38 runs, no passes. Rutgers, 18 runs, 8 passes. The key players, McWilliams, 10 rushes, 98 yards. Mayweather, 11 rushes, 50 yards. And Calvin Cass had 53 yards on 9 carries. Jimmy Can, 9 rushes for 57 yards. Body with 38 yards rushing. And Army has not uh, been stopped for negative yardage today. Scott Ernie in that first half passing-wise. Four for eight, 36 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Again, deceptives. Sometimes statistics can be deceptive. Scott Ernie played an excellent first half. He had the ball out there. Two drops, as a matter of fact, three drops. One that went for an interception, two by Gary Melton. That would have been key first down situation. So Rutgers got to start hanging on to the football a little bit better for their quarterback. Army kicks right to left. Gary Melton at the 10-yard line, to the 15, to the 20 and bangs across the 25-yard line to the 27. And Rutgers will go on offense first there. First down and 10. Rutgers up front with Erickson in the center, Erda and Tardy the guards, Milano and Hyros the tackles. Blanche is the tight end, and Tyrone McQueen starts at split end. Gary Melton's the flanker, body and can behind quarterback Scott Ernie. How important is his first drive for Rutgers? It's very, very important. Remember, Army puts the heat on you to score every time because you have to. You, you feel like you have to take advantage of each and every opportunity offensively. First and ten, are you at the 27? Mike Body, no yardage. Met at the line of scrimmage and dropped. Bob Wagner, the defensive end, coming up to make the play. Good job by Bob Wagner to meet the play at the line of scrimmage. He's a big guy, 6'4", 220 pounds stood up the blocker, shed the blocker, then stood up the ball carrier and made the tackle. That is linebacking play. No gain, second down and 10. Army defensively with Wagner, Huff, Ofti, Leducer, and DeForest up front. O'Toole and Davey, the linebackers. Givens, Thorson, Farnsworth, and Miguel Rath are in the defensive backfield. High formation for Rutgers. Here is Ernie, has protection, finds body at the 30. Cuts it up across the 35-yard line. He's close to first down yardage. 
I think he's going to be about a buck short. Good blood pattern that time by the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. They had both of the backs out in the pass pattern that time. Watch both backs out of the backfield as the fake to Jimmy Can. He slips through the middle and Body does a little circle route. There he is in the flat. Now picks up a little block here by Jimmy Can. There he is, number 32. The Body puts his head down and gets as close to the first down marker as he can. Third and one at the 36. Jimmy Can up and over, and that should be enough for the first down. Pat Davey met him in midair, but Can had already gotten first down yardage by that time. Looks like that just enough of a push at the line of scrimmage. Remember, you only need a yard, all you get is a yard. Play like that, what you're hoping to do as a tailback is that maybe you can bust the tackle, and if you can do, it's just Green Acres. There it is. Good job by Davey to hammer Can back down, but a little bit too little, too late. First and ten, Ernie, play action, fires over the middle. That's Mike Body who makes the catch uh, up to the 45-yard line, a pickup of about six. Good first down play, a very safe pass. Get your offense back into the flow. Now, you got to remember, also, because Army is a little bit in, inexperienced in the secondary, and we haven't mentioned O'Neill Miller's name. You take a quick look at Jim Lung Young and his graphic. O'Neill Miller, the best secondary guy for Army, is also out with knee surgery. Rutgers has not been able to exploit that, and that's because Army playing a deep zone defense right now. How do you take advantage? Do it underneath. Mike Body carries, but Bert DeForest plays it very well. The senior out of Derby, Connecticut. 6'2", 220 pounds, and he drops Body at the line of scrimmage. So a big third down play coming up for Rutgers. Well, that was an isolation situation. By that we mean what you want to do is not block one of the linebackers with a lineman. You want to isolate him so that either the fullback or the halfback will block him at the point of attack. That time, Jimmy Can drew that assignment didn't get it done, so that DeForest did a good job of shedding the block and making the tackle. Jimmy's got to throw a better block than that if he wants to give room for his running mate. Third and four. Here's Ernie looking to throw. Fires, has body, and he has the first down at midfield. O'Toole on the tackle, but a Rutgers first down. Terrific play by Mike Body of knowing where he was on the field. That's senior experience. That's why so many people were saying Rutgers should be a better ball club than they are right now because they have a lot of seniors. Seniors make plays like this. He got past the first down stripe so that he knew even if he got caught immediately after catching the football, if he got tackled, excuse me, that he'd have enough yardage for the first down. First drive of the second half for Rutgers. They're in Army territory just across the midfield stripe. Here's Ernie rolling out to the right. In trouble. Throws incomplete. Intended or in the general direction, if you will of Gary Melton, but that time Ernie just throwing it away. Well, pretty good coverage that time. A good rush by number 97, Bob Wagner, and a, and a pretty good throw by Ernie to avoid the uh, avoid the sack and not throw it up for grabs to get the possible interception. Here it is again. And you can see clearly he was just... Well, actually, maybe Melton had a shot at Try it. Try to drop it over the safety, Jerry Farnsworth. Just couldn't quite get it there. Meanwhile, the big offensive tackle for Rutgers, Bill Milano, down on the turf at Mikey Stadium. Senior 6'6", 275 pounds out of East Rutherford. And they're checking It's like an ankle. ankle. The way that, yeah, the way they're moving it around. Uh, looks like checking the ankle. He has had a good season, I think, overall for Rutgers. I, probably one of the more consistent offensive linemen. The Rutgers offensive line has not performed well as a unit. There have been some decent individual performances, and in the games that I've seen, it seems like Bill Milano has done a creditable job. They have not played well, as I said, as a unit, but individually they have talent, and, and occasionally they put it together. They have to be a little bit more consistent. When you've got guys going down with an injury like Bill Milano, that's how you lose consistency. Remember Steve Tardy, their academic All-American at right guard, was out for four games also, and I really believe that hurt. They lost Jeff Erickson for a little while from that offensive line. So it's difficult to gel as a unit. You can have fine individual performances, but the offensive line must function as one. 11 minutes, 32 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Army leading Rutgers 13 to 7. But Rutgers on the move. Second down, 10 in Army territory. Just inside the midfield strike. Here's a delay handoff to Body who runs into Burke DeForest. 
and picked up maybe a yard to the 49. And now a third down and long coming up for Rutgers. Well, interesting, Rutgers came out in a passing formation with a double wide slot situation and only run that run one running back, hoping to spread the defense, Lou, to open a little crack for my body. You show a passing look, then you give the ball to your big fullback. There's only one problem. Burton and Morris just wasn't buying it. Ernie straight back to throw. Has protection, moves up in the pocket, fires, has a receiver. Melton turns up field and has a Rutgers first down inside the 35. Uh, good job by Scott Ernie. Had to step around the rush that time. Will Huff breathing fire. Watch Huff number 78 from the bottom of your screen. He beats Bill Hyros to the outside, but Ernie steps up into the pocket. Then he sees Gary Melton. Well thrown ball. Melton concentrates and makes the catch. Gary Milton did not have a good first half. He's got to rally here in the second. If he's going to make plays like that, well, then he'll get the job done. First and 10 for the Scarlet Knights at the 34-yard line. Ernie play action. Has time again. Jimmy Can makes the catch at the 30. A good move, an excellent move, and he rolls inside the five. Superior individual effort by James Can, number 32, 30 yards on the reception. An excellent individual effort. There you see his running statistics. But what about Jimmy Can as a receiver? We talked about his all-purpose ability. You just saw it. Now watch the quick feet. Remember I said nifty but not shifty? Look at nifty. That is nifty. See the quick feet. Now one more quick cut there. Picks up a block and then look at the power to drive forward. Picks up another seven yards after the initial hit. Great individual effort by Jim Can. First and goal Rutgers at the five-yard line. Jimmy Can nailed at the line of scrimmage. DeForest again is playing a strong second half. He is very strong. 6'2", 220-pound senior, Bert DeForest at the defensive end. What he's doing right now is when he diagnoses the play, he's knifing in. Watch at the bottom of your screen. Now, he's supposed to be blocked by the fullback that time, Giles. Giles did not get enough of Bert DeForest. That's why the play was unsuccessful. Rutgers has had the ball nearly six minutes. This is what Army was doing to them in the first half. Very important for Rutgers, though, Lou. Very, very important. Ernie keeps, throws, end zone, incomplete. Had a man open, too. Intended for tight end Scott Blanche, but Ernie just threw it over his head. Kind of took off on him. What they're trying to do is take advantage of the height mismatch there on the corner. Mike Thorson there at the lower part of your screen. He just, just switched off. He's only 5'8", the cornerback, number 40. Scott Blanche at 6'3", certainly has a height advantage. What you want to do in a situation like that is a little fade pattern. Try to get that ball up in the air and let the big guy run under it and take it away from the smaller defensive back. Big play right here. Third down, goal to five. Ernie rolls out, left side. Now in trouble. Dumps it off, and the catch is made. Touchdown! John Murphy, converted tight end. What a play by Ernie. Terrific play by Scott Ernie. Running out of real estate, nowhere to go. Has the presence of mind to shuffle it. Remember, that is a legal forward pass. When you're behind the line of scrimmage, any way you can get it forward is legal. That was a little almost underarm shuffle. That looked like a little shuffle pass in basketball where he pushed it from his chest out. Folks, it doesn't matter how you get it done, just as long as you get it done. That's a heady play by a fifth-year senior quarterback, Scott Ern. Geisler to kick the extra point. The kick is up. It is good. Timeout on the field. Nine minutes, 11 seconds remaining. Third quarter. The score, Rutgers 14, Army 13. I'll never forget 1958, the first overtime championship game ever played in the NFL. United and the Colts, they beat the Giants 23-17. And the sporting news was there. Hey, you want overtime? How about that 1982 playoff game? The Chargers over the Dolphins, 41-38. The most exciting game I ever saw. And the sporting news was there. Yes, whether it's football, baseball, basketball, or hockey, wherever the excitement is, the Sporting News is there, bringing you more complete coverage than any other sports weekly. Call now for the Sporting News at the lowest price anywhere with convenient delivery right to your door.
Call 1-800-253-1000 and get 29 issues of the Sporting News for four payments of just $4.99. You'll save 69% off the cover price, 40% off the regular subscription rate. You can't get a better deal. Call 1-800-253-1000. That's 1-800-253-1000. John Murphy, who caught the touchdown pass, and congratulating Scott Ernie. Remember, you're looking at Murphy, who was a former quarterback, and fighting Ernie at one time for the quarterback position. Meanwhile, Army on the return gets good yardage across the 30-yard line to the 32. The Rutgers scoring drive, 13 plays, balanced well, eight via the pass, five on the running plays, 73 yards, five minutes, 49 seconds, chewed off the clock. Ernie on the drive, six for eight, 70 yards, the touchdown pass to John Murphy. Well, Scott Ernie is a big play guy. He makes the big plays. Remember the Ball State game we did earlier in the year? Time running out on the clock, fourth and goal situation. Rutgers trailing by a few points, by four points. They needed to get the touchdown. Who scrambles it into the end zone on a busted play but Scott Ernie? Here, it's a third and goal situation, nowhere to go. Who improvises the touchdown pass? Scott Ernie. Don't tell me this kid's not a winner, man. He gives it He gives it everything he has every time. There he is, 10 for 17, 115 yards, two TDs, and that one deceptive interception. Army pushed back a penalty on the run back, and the ball marked at the 17-yard line. So the cadets with their first offensive possession of this second half. And an equally important defensive series for Rutgers as the last offensive series was. Equally important. They have to establish that they can stop Army. Well, they didn't stop him on that play. Is the fullback, Dave Foy, picks up positive yardage. Up front for Army, Spire the center, Andresiak and Fry the guards, Silvers and Petkus the tackles, Doug Baker the tight end, Sean Jordan the split end. And in the backfield behind quarterback Brian McWilliams, it is Mike Mayweather and Calvin Cass at the halfbacks. Dave Foy, the fullback. Rutgers up front with Webster, Miller, Mays, Savoy, and Lester. Yudovich and Spidell, the linebackers. Mays and Blanton at the corners, and McCoy and Sellis at the safeties. McWilliams gives again to Foy. And Foy's done an excellent job running the football in this game. He picks up an Army first down, I no, believe, I just short. Actually, that was a dead ball foul, Lou, so that what happened is the referees marked the play, then added the penalty after that, so actually it will be a third and long situation. So again, a little bit deceptive. Rutgers giving some yardage on first and second down, but playing the type of defense that's a little bit softer because of the nature of the, of the offensive set. Very good, Frank. Third down and 12. And the first pass attempt of the game for Army McWilliams has a wide open receiver. Cameron Warshan makes the catch. And it's enough for an Army first down. Just enough for a first down, a big play. Army is a big play passing team. Let's take a look at it here. McWilliams looks one way, comes back the other way, and sees Worsham wide open in a well-thrown football as he puts it on a frozen rope. Worsham was wide open. Rutgers has to play a little bit better defensively in the secondary because that man was wide open on the third and long situation. McWilliams only 9 of 21 coming in. Two touchdowns, 201 yards. And Calvin Cass, who had a big first half, rambles into Rutgers' territory across midfield and to the 47-yard line. Well, we call Jimmy Can nifty. How about Calvin Cass? Watch these feet here. Again, counter option, handoff, straight handoff to the back. Look at him weave his way through the defense. Once again, that's what we call nifty running rather than out and out shifting. It's quick feet, cut, and go. Seven minutes remaining, third quarter, 14-13. Rutgers leads it, but Army's on the move again. The Cadets with a second down and two. Mike Mayweather has the first down and much more. He's cut from behind by John Blanton, but not before he crawls down to the 36-yard line of Rutgers. Great blocking that time at the point of attack, and there are some, some fresh shirts, and it is Jack Frey again. Great job. 
missed tackle at the line of scrimmage, and the reason it was missed is because Mike Mather, Mike Mayweather, excuse me, is so quick. It makes me speed up trying to even say his name. He is so quick through the hole. You think you got a good shot at him, and all of a sudden, whoosh, where'd he go? He's gone. First and 10 at the 36. Mayweather powers his way this time down near the 32-yard line. Actually, it was Foy who carried the football, I believe. He's the last man up underneath that pile. Second down and five coming up. But again, the positive yardage, you know it is Mike Mayweather, but watch how strong he is. He takes a terrific shot from Pat Udovich, but bounces off and still moves forward. That's why he's only lost five yards all year long. Excuse me, three yards all year long. Check that. Boy, this time, no yardage. Bob Spidell makes the initial hit at the line of scrimmage. Okay, this brings up a third and long situation. A big play for the Rutgers defense. This is gut check time. And the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Five minutes and 35 seconds remaining. So sooner or later, it's going to come down to one and one in football. That's why it's a terrific game. Yeah, it's a violent game sometimes. But part of the challenge of it is through that violence, when you come down to it, it's, it's a matter of desire. Where do you well that up from? And this is one of those situations right now. Who wants it for? Third down, four at the 30-yard line. McWilliams keeping. Now he cuts it back in, and a big-time move by McWilliams as he's across the 15-yard line. Rutgers had it played very well, but McWilliams slipped away. Terrific e effort, excuse me, by Brian McWilliams. Quick feet, great acceleration through the hole. I tell you, watch Eldardo Webster, number 93, says, I got him, I got him. Look, I'm right here, I've got him. I got him defense. He cuts back. Where's the fill? You need the linebacker to fill. When you get a guy to cut back like that, you want your linebacker there to put him down. Rutgers had nobody. First and 10, Army at the 14-yard line. Mayweather, touchdown, Army. Mayweather's 11th touchdown of the season, and Army has regained the lead. What a impressive drive. With some gaping holes in the front of the Rutgers defense, R Rutgers is going to have to make some adjustments to shut down this Army wishbone. Right now, they just ain't getting it done. And with the score 19-14, Army may go for two. What do you think of this call? Well, it sets up a situation here. Let's watch it on the replay first. That's our end zone special replay camera. Now, look how quick Mike Mayweather is. Bob Spidell was right there, and, and Mike Mayweather ran right through the tackle. You know, you, you get to a guy like Spidell, and you say, Bob, what happened? And he says, I couldn't catch him, coach. I was there. He's just too quick. That's why you got to bottle up a guy like Mike Mayweather. You can't tackle him with one guy, especially a linebacker. He's just too quick. you got to gang tackle him. You've got to give him no room to run. And Army will go for the two-point conversion right now because it'll set up a situation where Rutgers will need a touchdown and an extra point just to tie. And the cadets line up for two. Williams pitches outside Mayweather, looking to turn that corner, does. We know what they say, speed kills number 97. Rich Humphreys had a great angle, maybe against the lesser back, but not against Mike Mayweather. Look at 97, he's got a beat on him all the way, and he just can't catch him. Army converts the two-point conversion. The Black Knight is happy. Four minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the third quarter. A break in the action. Army 21, Rutgers 14. I'll never forget 1958, the first overtime championship game ever played in the NFL. United and the Colts, they beat the Giants 23-17. And the sporting news was there. The sporting news, with more complete coverage than any other sports weekly. Call 1-800-253-1000 and get 29 issues of the Sporting News for four payments of just $4.99. You'll save 69% off the cover price, 40% off the regular subscription rate. Call now, 1-800-253-1000.
Amboy Madison introduces another choice banking window of opportunity for homeowners. Equity loans are offered with variable interest rates indexed to the prime rate. Prime has soared to over 20% at times. Amboy Medicine's Equity Line Plus loan offers you lifetime cap protection of only 13.25% regardless of the current prime. For more information, call 1-800-AMB-MTGS. Equity Line Plus. Both offenses outstanding here in the third quarter. Rutgers gets the opening kickoff of the second half, drives right down the field and scores. Army takes the subsequent kickoff and does the exact same thing. The drive, eight plays 83 yards, four minutes and 18 seconds elapsed. The key play, McWilliams, the 13-yard pass on third and 12. Rutgers now on the kick return. Gary Melton. Knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line. That may be a late hit against Army. I think it is going to be a late hit, and that'll be 15 yards tacked on to that outstanding return of the kick by Gary Melton, one of the nation's best, and he showed you why. Watch him pick his way through. You have to have a crack, and then it's up to your return, man. Watch the wedge right here. Boom, they take Mike Thorson out. Boom, they take out another player. Then a good cut by Melton right here, but he gets driven out of bounds, and there he goes. He's down. Now, that's a clean hit all the way. Late block there by a Rutgers player against an Army player. So a good 35-yard a good 35 yard return by Melton is going to be called back. Yes, the penalty is against Rutgers. I was just about to mention a late hit would be very uncharacteristic of an Army football team, and lo and behold, that's not the case. No, it will go against Rutgers, and once again, it ruins the return. You see Dick Anderson, he is not happy at all. You don't know whether he's unhappy with the officials or the player. I would think the player because that was clearly, you saw just a sliver of it at the corner of the screen. Not enough to really catch a number, but that was a late hit. Remember, late hits don't happen just on the tackle. You must stop blocking. You must stop tackling on the whistle. If you don't, that's a 15-yard personal foul penalty. And that hurts Russ Rutgers. Still good field position, but not what they once had. Rutgers starts with its largest deficit of the day, trailing by seven. Ernie with tons of time now rolls out of the pocket, looking to throw, does, has McQueen at midfield, and that's a first down for Rutgers in Army territory at the 47. Now, once again, it's going to be a similar situation where that was called the dead ball foul, Lou, so it won't be a first down. It's got a great gain on first down. It'll be second and short again. Remember, those late hits are dead ball fouls. They are tacked on after the ball is placed. But let's talk a little bit about Scott Ernie. What a terrific play. Improvisation by the quarterback. Now watch the scramble. Now watch. He sends guys on a fly. Why? Because it's going to clear the zone. And here comes Tyrone McQueen back to the football as an experienced receiver should. Mike Body met at the 45-yard line. A pickup of one yard. And Rutgers will be faced with a third down. It'll be third down and two. And one of the cadets is down. O'Toole. O'Toole. And he gave Mike Body quite a shot. That was a major league collision. Well, he's holding his ribs right now. Believe me, something's got to give in a situation like that. And unfortunately, what it usually is is like some muscle and some bone. And not, not to be morbid, but folks, this is a physical game. And it ain't for everybody, but that's what makes it so special. Because when you can play it, and you can play it well, and you can overcome the hardships, the rewards are incredible. Scott Ernie, 11 of 18. He is having an excellent game. Come on, defense! Come on, defense! Third and two. Play action. Ernie hits Melton, who has the first down. Not by a whole lot, but got enough to get the first down. And coming up to make the play, Jerry Farnsworth. But a nice play by Melton. An excellent job by Melton. They take a look at Jerry Farnsworth, who made a nice tackle, but a great play by Gary Melton. Again, we, we, we say it, and, and we try to do it as fairly as we can. You, when someone is not playing right, it's our job to say they're not. But when they're playing well, you give credit where credit is due. Gary Melton really rallying here in the second half. That was a great play because, once again, he knew where the first down stripe was, and he was past it when he caught the football. Excellent job by Gary Melton. First and 10 at the 42. Ernie throws, and it's intercepted. Ed Gibbons picks 
hands it off and brings it back near the 35. And again, don't fault Scott Ernie on that play off of the hands of Tyrone McQueen. Well, the ball that was thrown a little high, there's Scott Ernie. He sees McQueen out on the corner. McQueen goes way up for it. It's in his hands, but he can't come down with it. Lou, that's one of the most difficult receptions to make for a wide receiver because it's so difficult with your shoulder pads to get your arms cleanly above your head so it's you know you can take a lot away from Tyrone McQueen but it's just not an easy catch to make interception number 14 for Ernie on the season second of the day and Mayweather down to the 31 yard line and again Rutgers killing themselves with the turnover. Well, we talked about it in the first half, and now is a good chance to talk about it again here in the second half. You must win the turnover battle. We mentioned how there are placards all over the place here at Mikey Stadium that give the five main objectives of Army football teams to win, and number one is to win the turnover battle because, folks, it's that important. Second down, six at the 31. Nick Williams keeps... Cuts it back in and is banged down at the 28-yard line. Spidell, Lester, and also Yudovich all combining on the tackle well, and a big third down play coming up. That's how you defense the wishbone. Great job by Tim Lester to turn the play inside, and he got the help that he needed from Spidell and Yudovich. That's the way you have to defense the wishbone if you want to be successful. There it is on the replay. Now watch when Lester turns him in. Look at Spidell and Yudovich. Boom. Hello there, quarterback. Third down two. Mayweather spins for what appears to be an Army first down. What a together running back Mike Mayweather is. You hit him at the line of scrimmage, but does that mean the play is over? No way, because he's going to spin out, and he's going to get positive yardage for you. 16 carries, 90 yards for Mike Mayweather. Well on his way to another 100-yard game. Here it is. Now watch this. He gets hit at the line of scrimmage. Watch how he turns and keeps his leg moving and heading north and south. What a terrific runner. First and 10 for the cadets at the 24. O'Toole, no, O'Toole, Foy carries the football. Dave Foy. <laughs> got a little, got a little excited. Oh, tools time. running on uh, uh, offense. You've got a scoop, folks. <laughs> Elnardo Webster on the tackle. Pretty good job by Elnardo Webster. There he is, 6'3", 225 from Jersey City. Now remember, he's playing defensive end, not necessarily assigned to the fullback to make the tackle. Depends on the defensive alignment, but had enough quickness to get back into the play and make the tackle up the middle on the fullback. Second down, eight at the 23 and time winding down here in the third quarter mcwilliams pitches outside calvin Cass with a nice cut inside the 20 and then pummeled out of bounds by darren sellers and bob spider oh then elnardo webster number 93 really got a lick in there and i'll tell you look for that as a former defensive back lou and you, you're taking a beat from these big offensive linemen running you down now watch number 93 he's got a little blood in his eye here now let's watch the pitch there it is Pretty good job by the corner to force. Now watch when he cuts in. This is what you got to do. Bang! 93 and there with a forearm shiver. You know what that does? It says, hey, hey, tailback, you're going to cut in? You're going to meet me, fella. Third down and four for Army at the 16. McWilliams pitches wide. Calvin Cass, first down, Army. Inside the 10. Terrific block on the corner. And then a good job of Calvin Cass of reading the block and heading up the field for the first down. Johnny Blanton was out there, but he gets tangled up with the tight end. Let's watch it on the replay here. There it is. There's the triple option. There's the pitch. Now look at Doug Baker on John Blanton right there at the top of your screen. Great job by Baker to give Cass the opportunity to cut either left or right. He chose right, which was the right choice. Got the first down. First and goal at the 10-yard line. Mayweather. Gets it to the 7, and the clock winding down here, third quarter, Army leading 21-14. 5-4, that'll do it. We have played three quarters of football at Mikey Stadium, and the score, Army 21, Rutgers 14. Is your business looking to increase its net profit? And just follow the bouncing ball.
you manage a local business, get a jump on your competition. Call your cable operator and advertise during the NBA on TNT. ESPN presents the world's ultimate driving machine. You'll see coverage of the U.S. Open, British Open, PGA Championship, and year-long excitement from the PGA Tour. There's also the precision of the Lady Linksters and fun from tee to green with those swinging seniors. Join the world's greatest golfers for heart-stopping and heart-breaking thrills all year long on ESPN. Just underway in the fourth quarter. Army just ran a play. Let's watch it again. Here on the replay, again, the, the power eye, if you will, straight T situation, whatever you want to call it. What they're going to do is move the offside halfback and the fullback into the line of scrimmage and give it to the remaining tailback. Get as much a push of the line of scrimmage as they can get. Third and goal at the two. Mayweather, touchdown, Army. touchdowns today from Mike Mayweather, his 12th of the season. Well, he had three last year against Rutgers. I'll tell you, you want to call somebody a nemesis? They never want to see this guy again. They're hoping he gets stationed to Fort Bragg or something and, and maybe before next year because they tell you, he kills him. Three, uh, over 100 yards last year with three TDs. He's close, close to 100 yards again today. 19 rushes for 99 yards and three touchdowns on the afternoon. And having strike kicks the extra point. So a break in the action. Four minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. The score is Army 28, Rutgers 14. Amboy Madison introduces another choice banking window of opportunity for homeowners. Equity loans are offered with variable interest rates indexed to the prime rate. Prime has soared to over 20% at times. Amboy Medicine's Equity Line Plus loan offers you lifetime cap protection of only 13.25% regardless of the current prime. For more information, call 1-800-AMB-MTGS. Equity Line Plus. I'll never forget 1958, the first overtime championship game ever played in the NFL. United and the Colts, they beat the Giants 23-17. And the Sporting News was there. The Sporting News, with more complete coverage than any other sports weekly. Call 1-800-253-1000 and get 29 issues of the Sporting News for four payments of just $4.99. You'll save 69% off the cover price, 40% off the regular subscription rate. Call now, 1-800-253-1000. Army leading 28-14, the drive seven plays. 35 yards, 35 three yards. minutes and four seconds. And Army has converted two Rutgers interceptions into touchdowns. Both of those interceptions touched by a Rutgers player off their hands and into the hands of the defender. And Dick Anderson, Anderson has to be shaking his head. Well, you know, he's got to take the blame for stuff like that. As the head coach, you get the glory, you get the grief, too. But what are you going to do, Lou? A high kick and trying, obviously, to kick it away from Melton, and it goes out of bounds. You know, Army's got the wishbone in high gear, man. They got an overdrive. Good chance of three players being over 100 yards today. McWilliams already there with 118 on the day. Mike Mayweather needs one yard as he stands at 99 yards for the afternoon. And Calvin Cass, who hasn't carried it much here in the second half, has 75 yards. You think they missed uh, Ben Barnett? I'm sure they did. And I know their players missed them. As you take a look at number 30, Mike Mayweather, big smile on his face. And, hey, why not? He's having a great afternoon. 19 rushes for 99 yards. There it is in the big three TDs. Yeah, real happy young man. Really nice kid. He really is a nice kid. But uh, I tell you, nothing to take anything away from Ben Barnett. You just saw him very quickly in the background there with the crutches and the cast. But uh, Army has got tremendous depth, one of the keys to their, to their success, because Dave Boy has had a terrific game as a backup. Army will, of course, have to re-kick after kicking off out of bounds. Jeff Binney kicks off for Army. He does not do the place kicking. Havenstrike does the place kicking. And they'll tee it up again. 14 minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the game. Rutgers trailing by two touchdowns. A tremendous kick 
drives Milton back to the end zone. He's to the 10, to the 15, and knocked down there. Army with tremendous coverage. And coming down for the cadets to make the tackle was Percy Cord, number 29. You know, it hurts sometimes because when things get rolling against you, they tend to snowball sometimes. Rutgers a little bit snake bit. Now here's the wedge for Rutgers. Melton makes the cut, but look at the flying bodies to take down Gary Melton. I tell you, that's what momentum is, folks. Things get rolling in one direction or the other. When you're on the top end of it, it's a terrific feeling, but when you're on the bottom, ow, it really hurts. Now don't, co don't count out the Rutgers offense. This is a big play offense, and they can score some points. There's Body across the 20 to the 23-yard line. Uh, excuse me, Can on the reception. Ernie throwing to Can. You know, you have a quarterback who's 11th in the nation in total offense, so they can move the football. No question about it, and the offensive line has done a great job of affording Scott Ernie the kind of protection he needs. And when you can throw to a guy like this, look at number 32. Watch him break the tackle of the strong safety, Jerry Farnsworth. If Pat Davey wasn't hustling over there to make the tackle, that could have been a real big game. Second down, Ernie has time. He throws it complete. Intended for Tyrone McQueen and Givens on the coverage. Pretty good coverage that time by Ed Givens. Scott Ernie, again, throwing the ball where there's only a chance for one guy to catch it, and that's his receiver. He had to throw that ball low and inside, keep it away from the defender. Let's watch it on the replay. Again, pretty good protection and a good, strong throw by Ernie. It's a little turn-in pattern that time. He has to put it down and away so that the defender cannot get back into the play. Third down and two. And the 22. Rutgers with receivers flooded out to the left side. Ernie in trouble. And he'll go down. The first sack of the game. It's Leducer. Tim Leducer on the defensive play. Man, that was a big play by number 80, Tim Leducer. 6'4", 246 pounds, the senior. A converted tight end, Lou. But they had so much depth at tight end, they decided to move him into tackle. Good rush on the outside by Wagner, which gives Leducer the opportunity to come inside. Leducer thought that Ernie threw the football. Did you see him look back downfield? He said, wow, I almost got there. Hey, son, you made it. <laughs> Pellegrino to punt. And it's a high kick. And Wynn will let it bounce at the 45. And Army's going to have terrific field position just shy of their own 40-yard line. Well, Lou, it's now or never for Rutgers. They've got to play some defense, which they really haven't done so far this afternoon. And again, not to, to discredit Rutgers' defense, but to give more credit to the Army offense. They have just been absolutely terrific. Rutgers has got to find something somewhere and stop Army right now if they're going to have any chance to get back at these balls. Rutgers defense looking to rise to the occasion. They are down by 14 points. <laughs> McWilliams keeps pitches wide. Calvin Cass down to the 48-yard line. Terrific block that time by number seven, Sean Jordan. We haven't mentioned his name, but watch him. He'll be to the right of your screen. Now there's the fake to the fullback. Somebody takes the fullback. Now watch them take the quarterback right there. Who's got the pitch man? Nobody, because they're on the right side of your screen as Sean Jordan throwing a great block on Rusty Mays. That's why it's working so well. Calvin Cass rapidly approaching the century mark on the afternoon rushing. Mayweather across midfield, and he has an Army first down. Oh, even a small play like that, Lou, when your offensive line is doing the job, it looks like there were white shirts all over him from the beginning. The only difference is the beginning now is three yards beyond the line of scrimmage because your offensive line is doing a great job of that initial push. Army trying to really put this one away, if you will. With a first down and 10 in Rutgers territory at the 49. Mike Mayweather turning it upfield, and he dives to the 46-yard line. He's clearly up over 100 yards for the afternoon, up and around 105 yards. Again, that's unofficial, although we have one of the best statisticians that I've ever known, Tom Sharkey here, feeding him to us. So if he says so, i got to take it as gospel. Here's Mike Mayweather, good blocking again inside. There's Tim Lester. But look at all the Rutgers players on their backs. 
and Mike Mayweather on his stomach. That means he's getting a good push, and his momentum is carrying him forward. McWilliams takes a good hit, but dives down to the 37-yard line. Vaughn McCoy came up originally, and Pat Yudovich covers up, but it is another Army first down. Now here it is. They're just so quick. Again, this is just the triple option. He gets a great block by Calvin Cass, a good lead block. He reads that block and then heads up the field. Right now, it's very, very painfully obvious for the Rutgers faithful that Army is just a little bit too quick for Rutgers this afternoon. First and 10, and Calvin Cass with another huge hole, and Army just pounding away here as Cass is up near the 31-yard line. Elnardo Webster on the tackle. Well, Army looking to win its second straight game over Rutgers. And they'll do it with this type of offensive line play. Here it is again. It's just the straight handoff, not the triple option that time. Think of it as just a T-formation handoff with some power lead blocking by the fullback and the offside halfback. Nothing fancy to it. They're just going to ram it right down Rutgers' throat. Second and five at the 31. Up the middle. Mayweather takes a couple of shots, but plugs ahead for about two yards. Marty Mays on the tackle, the nose guard for Rutgers. The cadets have only beaten Rutgers three times since 1979. Rutgers has won seven of the last ten, but as we mentioned, Army looking to make it two in a row. And I guess in sports, the most famous phrase is, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> and that's uh, what Army is trying to do to Rutgers here. Well, they've, they've done a lot today. Good play that time, by the way, by uh, Pat Udovich. Good, good job to stop make what Mike Mayweather for a short game. Third and two. Mayweather is. It'll be close. It looks like he has the first down. John Blanton came up to meet him. Terrific play that time by Blanton to shed the block of Doug Baker and come up and make the play. Let's watch it towards the left side of your screen. Now watch 23 getting rid of the tight end this time. He comes into your picture right there and makes a good hit. That's a nice play. That's how you have to force the issue on the wishbone. The only problem, Lou, is uh, I'm afraid to say it, it might be. might be a little too little too late unless Rutgers can make a deep, big defensive play. They've got to do it right now. It's another Army first down. First and 10 at the 26-yard line. Calvin Cass with another quick first. He's inside the 20. Down to the 19. Glenn Miller and Vaughn McCoy cover up. Yeah, but you, you, you're calling all the secondary guys names, Lou. With it. You say, hey, what's wrong with this picture when you've got all the guys in the secondary making the tackles most of the time? Sure, against the wishbone, they'll get more tackles than they ordinarily will because they're such an integral part of stopping the run. But this is, like, out of control. Now, Calvin Cass just needs four more yards to get up over 100. McWilliams has 126. Mayweather, 109. And Cass, 96. When was the last time you knew three backs to go over 100 yards? Second and four at the 20. McWilliams keeps pitches wide. And banging down near first down yardage was Mayweather. Rusty Mays came up to make the hit. Yeah, Mays and Glenn Miller did a good job of double teaming again, but Rutgers should have been doing that from the very beginning. And they'll measure as you watch it on the replay. There it is. There's the triple option, the fake to the fullback. Now they option Udovich that time. And there's Miller with the inside support, but he finally gets some outside help from Rusty Mays. You've got to have somebody that's going to force the play back into the middle and then have somebody there to cover the middle. Not a big guy there, Glenn Miller, but a tough-nosed, tough, hard-nosed tough, hard kid. Glenn out of Somerville, New Jersey, a senior. Yeah. Hasn't played a lot, but when he has played, he's done a good job. Here's an interesting statistic given to me by Tom Sharkey. Army this afternoon has had no drive today, less than six plays. No, uh, None of that chorus line offense, one, two, three, kick. Not for Army this afternoon. I'll tell you, they have it cranked up in high gear. One pass completion in one attempt for 13 yards. All the rest has been on the ground. Quite incredible. Army with a first down on that last run by Mayweather. First down and 10 at the 16-yard line. McWilliams pitches, Mayweather kind of tiptoes his way down to the 11-yard line before he's finally knocked out of bounds, stopping the clock with 8-12 remaining. Army 28, Rutgers 14. And one of the Rutgers players down on the hit. Here again, here it is, the triple option again. Now what Mayweather's trying to do, tiptoeing down the line, is trying to read the block of the tight end. 
but if you can get a stalemate with the tight end in a situation like that, you can get your pursuit to come and help you out and make the play, and that's what happened. And very difficult to see who that player is on the near sideline. Well, we won't speculate in that case, then. Too much, uh, too much medical personnel there right now. It's been all Army here in this second half. The cadets have just really controlled the football and have been able to put together long drives. Well, Mike Mayweather came into the game needing 372 yards to be the all-time leading rusher for, for Army. I said he probably wouldn't do it at 372 yards. He'd have to certainly have a career day. But uh, I, I, I'd take 117 yards uh, on an afternoon for an afternoon's work. What do you think, Lou? I would, too. Chris Pickell was the injured Rutgers player. He seems to be okay. And that's good news for Rutgers. Scarlet defense, it's been a rough year, as you can see. They've given up passing yards, they've given up rushing yards, and a lot of points, 25 points per game. That's a lot of points for a defense to give up. Almost 26 points a game, that isn't good. And on the average, they give up 220 yards on the ground. Good, good defenses don't do that, Lou. Good defenses should be 100 yards or less, like you take an Auburn or, or even a Penn State for that matter, giving up 95, 96 yards a game on the average. Rutgers 220 ain't gonna do it for you. Hate the vernacular, but no other way to say it. Meanwhile, Army with a second down and five. And a little bit of a delay for some reason. The clock is stopped at 8 to 10. Now they'll wind the clock down. Ball at the 11-yard line. Army trying to drive the final nail into the Rutgers coffin here. Alvin Katz. Behind the blocking of John Silvers, the tackle. And he's close to first down yardage. He may be a yard shy. It'll be third down and one. And the ball marked at the seven yard line. Let's watch it on the replay again. What they call a, a counter option, if you will, although it's really not the option play. It's really just a counter trap play. What the quarterback does is take one step in one direction, spin around, which gives the offensive lineman a chance to pull, make their blocks, get the defense just leaning in the opposite direction so the, cat, the back can cut back in there for the yard. Mayweather all the way down to the one yard line, where he was met by Pat Yudovich and Glenn Miller. But Mayweather needed a yard and picked up five. He's been doing it all afternoon. You know, Army does something very interesting from the wishbone. They like to run to the short side of the field rather than to the wide side of the field. And I talked to Jim Young about that. He said, Frank, because it creates certain mismatches for us because of the balance of our offense. The defense has to respect the wide side of the field. So when we run back to the short side, we get a half a man advantage and we'll take any advantage we can get. Touchdown Army, Dave Foy, the senior fullback, and the cadets have blown it open. I think there'll be a little celebrating at West Point tonight. Well, as much celebrating as they do, or as they're allowed to do, I guess, anyway. <laughs> Foy, you see there on the touchdown guy. The big aim working on his tan, I guess. Yeah. yeah, it's certainly warm enough to do that. I was going to say, was that the Black Knight who shed his armor? <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Right. Here is Havenstreich. The kick is up, and it is good. And there's a break in the action. Seven minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the game. Army in command. The cadets lead it by the score of 35 to 14. I'll never forget 1958, the first overtime championship game ever played in the NFL. United and the Colts, they beat the Giants 23-17. And the sporting news was there. Hey, you want overtime? How about that 1982 playoff game? The Chargers over the Dolphins, 41-38. The most exciting game I ever saw. And the sporting news was there. Yes, whether it's football, baseball, basketball, or hockey, wherever the excitement is, the Sporting News is there, bringing you more complete coverage than any other sports weekly. Call now for the Sporting News at the lowest price anywhere with convenient delivery right to your door. Call 1-800-253-1000 and get 29 issues of the Sporting News for four payments of just $4.99. You'll save 69% of the cover price, 40% of the regular subscription rate. You can't get a better deal. Call 1-800-253-1000. That's 1-800-253-1000. Army in control 
at Mikey Stadium, 35-14. And they're looking to win their third in a row. And barring something spectacular by Rutgers, they will. Gary Melton in the end zone at the 10. And bangs his way across the 20-yard line to the 23. The drive for Army, 13 plays, 61 yards. Five minutes and 36 seconds chewed off the clock. Army with three rushers now over 100 yards. And 406 rushing yards on the afternoon. See, that's what I call getting boned. Wish boned to death. Army can do it second week in a row. As a matter of fact, I believe the third week in a row, or has it been two out of the last three? I, I don't know. They've had over 400 yards at least a couple of times this year. <laughs> and we have a new quarterback for Rutgers to begin this series. It is Tom Tarver, number 13. Tom Tarver into the game. He's a junior out of Jackson, New Jersey. 6'2", 205 pounds. He takes over for Scott Ernie, and Tarver now getting some playing time. And a talented player at that also. Throws long. Jackson makes the catch. Randy Jackson. And he's tripped up inside the 20-yard line. No, they say he stepped out of bounds at the 32. Well, Randy Jackson's been a big play player this year for Rutgers. That's the first time we've seen him catch the ball, Frank. He has a 34.0 average per reception. And 13 yards, excuse me, on... Uh, on um, at three TDs, so he is a big play guy. That was a good touch pass. What he did is he threw it over Mike Thorson, talking about Tom Tarver, threw it over Mike Thorson in the corner, and just before the safety could come over on the coverage, he read the zone properly, found the crease in the zone, and Tarver got it there to him. Tarver to McQueen, who makes an excellent move, and McQueen is out of bounds inside the 15-yard line to the 13. Wow, Rutgers really moving quickly. Well, there's six minutes and 46 seconds left. Hey, listen, Rutgers has got a long way to go. And I'm not saying they can't score. The problem is they can't play defense today against Army. And the chances of them getting the, getting the ball back if they do score, quite frankly, are pretty lean right now, though. So that's what we mean by that. But Rutgers a very, very exciting offensive ball club and has played well offensively. Just, they just haven't had the ball enough times because Army has controlled it so much uh, when they had the football. And Tarver getting his chance to play. Mike Body carries the football down to the 10-yard line. Pickup of about three. Well, Tarver has played some in the past. He played last year. You see his counterpart right there, Brian McWilliams. We saw Tarver last year against West Virginia come in, do a fairly good job. I thought he did a great job. He reminds me a lot. Of, of Major Harris, about the same size, 6'2", 205 pounds. Harris just a little bit heavier at about 210 or 212, but similar kind of abilities. Big play guys, runs well with the football, with a good, strong arm. He, he is the quarterback of Rutgers' future, no doubt about it. Second and eight, Tarver looking, throwing, has a receiver, Jimmy Can, inside the five-yard line, down to the four. I think you could get an offside call against Army that time. Good job of, good job, good job by uh, Tom Tarver to stagger the count. We want you to see something very, very interesting here on Mike Mayweather. Let's see if we can pick it up now. He sat on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we'll try to set that up later. We'll hold that. We'll hold that for a surprise and, and uh, see if we can pick it up a little bit later. It's <laughs> obviously something uh, someone's wearing, folks. Just so you know, because Frank said he sat, sat on, on it. it. <laughs> just so you know what, what's going on. Well, it, it's something to show to show the ultimate respect that Mike Mayweather has for his fallen comrade, if you will, Ben Barnett. And when we, if and when we have the opportunity to show that to you, we will. Meanwhile, Rutgers takes the uh, offside penalty. It'll make it second down and one, second and two, rather, at the five. Okay, here's the replay on it. We were looking for the offside situation. Can't really necessarily see it on the replay. Take our words for it, uh, for it folks. The Zebras uh, went with us that time, and there was offsides against the Army Cadets, so Rutgers second and short situation. Second and one at the five. Tarver in trouble. He'll go down. Pat Davey. In on the sack. Pat Davey, normally an inside linebacker, a tight linebacker, split out wide to his right, and Blitz came in virtually untouched. The second sack for Army on the afternoon. There he is, number 66. Good performer, the leading tackle, tackler for the Black Knights. Here it is on the replay. Watch from the bottom of your screen. Mike Body just a little slow in reacting to try to get to Pat Davey. When he couldn't get to Davey, Davey got to Tarver. 
third down and about seven. Tarver throws, and it's intercepted. In and out of the hands of Jimmy Tan, and Mike McElrath picks it off. Not bad for the freshman. He gets to get on the uh, in the stat sheet with an interception. Now let's watch Tom Tarver. There's Jimmy Can. He's open, but the ball is thrown behind him. Can tries to reach back to get a hand on it, but he just can't get enough of it to either catch it or knock it down. That was really a poorly thrown ball that time. Dick Anderson, not a happy camper. For McElrath, but the freshman, his first interception. Well, he has to start somewhere, and uh, he's bloodied himself, if you will, this afternoon against the Scarlet Knights. Five minutes even remaining in the game, and Army just straight up the gut. Mike Mayweather on the carry. He's to the 14-yard line. Zed O'Neill next to uh, next to Dick Anderson. He's the uh, linebacker coach, a former pro football linebacker himself. Played for the Detroit Lions. Former number one draft pick, as a matter of fact, out of Penn State, linebacker university. Mayweather again, nothing fancy. Up to the 20 yard line. That's an Army first down. Every time he carries the football, he gets closer and closer to the all time Army rushing lead. He's just an incredible performer. The Army offense gets a terrific hand from the hometown fans. And the Army offense, which has rolled it up today, will come out and Jim Young has made wholesale changes. He will go with the second team offense with four minutes remaining in the contest. The new quarterback will be Willie McMillan, sophomore six foot one, out of Sierra Vista, Arizona. And the give is up the middle. Darren Sell is coming up to make the hit. A uh, pickup of about three yards with that second unit in there. Carrying the football for Army. Got to get out that slip call. Pat Mangan, number 33, one of the Rutgers players down as well. You know, the Army people really like Willie McMillan, Lou. They, they think he is going to be an outstanding performer. As a matter of fact, they feel that if Brian McWilliams should go down with an injury or falter, that Willie McMillian, McMillan, excuse me, is more than capable of filling in for him. They really like him. He's, he's a little bit bigger than, than Brian McWilliams. He's 6'1", 187 pounds. We take a look at the series history. Army holding a 14-8 to eight lead, and we'll add to that. They'll go 15-8 last year's meeting, much I guarantee you. Second down, seven. Here's McMillan. He shows a couple of good moves and stretches out across the 35-yard line. Eric Deering, number nine, coming up to make the tackle. And Rutgers has several second-team players in as well on defense. Let's take a look at it on the replay. You see how quick Willie McMillan is, and he's he's a good-sized kid for an option quarterback. At six foot one, about 190 pounds. He can hurt you when he hits you, but he's got quick feet and good straight-ahead speed. One of the quickest players on the team. First and 10 at the 35, and a five-yard give up the middle to the 40-yard line. On the carry, Callian Thomas, who didn't particularly like the way he was handled by the Rutgers defense, but no harm. Second and five. Unfortunately, too much of that from Rutgers' standpoint, no harm. Got to harm people on defense. Slow. Well, Scarlet Knight, he ain't quitting. <laughs> well, maybe he is leaving. I don't there know. he goes. He jumps <laughs> the fence. <laughs> Callian Thomas, again, on the carry. Picks up a couple. To the 42. Second down, three coming up. Two and a half remaining in the game. And Rutgers going down to the feet for the fourth time. Army with a big win. Well, they, they needed this win because next uh, week they'll be out in the Air Force and they've got to be geared up to play the Falcons in Colorado Springs. Always, always a tough game out there. and They'll have to be geared up to stop uh, Air Force's outstanding option quarterback, D. Dowers, one of the best in the country. McMillan keeps and is hit at the 48-yard line. 
Tim Lester on the tackle, but that's enough for an Army first down. And they'll keep possession now with under two minutes remaining in the game. Army will go to five and two. An excellent start for the cadets. Rutgers, no easy task next week either, as they're in Morgantown, West Virginia, and have to take on Major Harris and the West Virginia Mountaineers. Here it is on the replay. You see how strong Willie McMillan is as he gets hit and still leans forward for an extra two yards. And good defense by the Knights that time. Darren Sellen, Glenn Miller actually coming up to make the play. And you mentioned Rutgers has three games left. Uh, they will play West Virginia actually in two weeks. They'll take on the Mountaineers. They have a week off the heel. That's that be uh, the next game. And they'll yeah. beat it too. They'll, they'll take on West Virginia down in Morgantown. I mean, a very difficult assignment to say the least. There's Eric Deering, number nine. Glenn Miller, number two. After that, it's down to Philadelphia against Temple, and the Owls have struggle. And then it's the Emerald Isle Classic in Dublin, number two. Number two against Pitt. And although that's a nice trip, I'm sure Dick Anderson would like an easier assignment. The Panthers are not. The, Exactly. It's going to be pushovers. Pushovers is the word. Yeah. I was there for Emerald Isle Classic number one, Army Boston College last year. What an incredible experience it is for the guys, I'll tell you. Uh, unbelievable. When I was in college, I did have the opportunity to travel a little bit. I got to play in Florida and Washington, D.C., and Pennsylvania and Connecticut. And I found that one to be one of the more enjoyable parts of college football was some of the travel. Get to meet new people, fresh people. But nothing like going overseas and playing with people who are so appreciative as to what you're trying to do as an athlete. And Army will run one more play. Third down. And nine. McMillan looking to pitch. And he's brought down at the 45-yard line. That'll just about do it. All right, impressions of this game. Well, Army, uh, we, we, I call them the Rodney Dangerfields of Eastern College football. And, Maybe that's a, that's a misnomer. I personally know that is a misnomer because they play every single week 110%. And they can beat virtually any team in the country on any given day. They are always well prepared. They are extremely well coached. And they'll be there at the end. For Rutgers, quite frankly, what I have to say is that they, they, they have a handful of players who are credible players, hard-nosed players. But to, to tell you the honest truth, quite frankly, I, I was... I was kind of amazed at how, how physically they were pushed around, particularly on defense against the smaller Army ball club today. But they have to can't keep in there. They've got to hang in there. They've got to keep their heads up. They are also well coached by Dick Anderson, and they've got to stay with the program. They have the opportunity to play the spoiler role and beat some good teams. And the rest of the, rest of the games are all on the road, so they can still salvage something out of their season. All right, that'll do it from Mikey Stadium for Frank Labono. I'm Lou Brogno. Thank you very much for joining us. The final score, Army 35 and Rutgers 14.